my friends, welcome to another day of Vlogmas. Today is gonna be the last sort of wrapping up 2023 video that I do, at least this side of the year. Um, this is gonna be all of the series that I finished in the year of 2023. Series really are the bane of my existence. I am always in the middle of so many, but I did a good job completing series this year, I think. Um, because of the goal of like binging series. And I did have some series that I DNF'd. I didn't even think about like calculating that or figuring out how many that was, how many I got off of my overall list. Should I look that up? Let's, let's look that up. I think, I'm pretty sure that my numbers here are up to date on the spreadsheet. So let me look at, so this says that I DNF'd five series this year. I finished 11 series that I was in the middle of, and now I am in the middle of 43 series. <laughs> so that's good. We, we did go down, you know, quite a bit. I was in the middle of a lot more at the beginning of the year. Technically I finished 14 series this year because I did do three series rereads. So let's get into the list. I'll start with the three I've already talked about um, in that other video, Shadow and Bone. I reread this entire series this year. It was an incredible success. Absolutely loved it. Um, and then of course, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I finished that duology. And of course, I reread the entire Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. This was another highly successful reread for me. Absolutely loved it. So now we can get into all the series that I completed this year in no particular order. Let's start with the Silo trilogy by Hugh Howey. I read the entire series this year because the TV show came out. Uh, silo on Apple TV and I loved it. Another thing I talked about in another video this vlogmas and I also talked about the book so I'm not going to talk about it too much here. I will say like all of them, this is such a rare occurrence too where because usually for me it's like oh the, the first book in the series is my favorite or the, it was the last book in the series which is rare. It's usually the first book in the series. That's my favorite. Um, this was every single book in the series was on par with each other. Like this one, the second one, the third one, they were all great equal in my mind. So it's just like one whole entity that I absolutely love. Um, so I read Wool, I read, what was the second one? Yes, Wool, Shift, and Dust. I read all three of them this year. I had a great time. They were all 4.5 stars, somewhere in there, 4.25, something like that. Not quite a full five star, but I really enjoyed this series. If you want something that's gonna like really either get you out of a slump or just keep you turning pages. Like the intrigue is so high with this series. Highly recommend. Another one I've recently talked about because this made it onto the nice list for 2023, the Hell's Library series. The first book being The Library of the Unwritten by AJ, AG, no AJ. I thought I got it wrong and I got it right. AJ Hackwith. This was great. And I don't need to talk about it again because I literally just talked about it in that other video. But I had an amazing time with this. Solid like four star series. I will say the, the first book is my favorite book in the series and the other two petered out for me. Um, but I'm glad that I read the series as a whole and this book will always hold a special place in my heart. I'm not sure if Alex E. Harrow is done with this series, but I haven't heard any news. I haven't seen any announcements of new books coming out. I'm assuming that this is the end. It felt like the second book felt very final. So I'm just calling this a duology for now. If and when I'm ever proven wrong, then I will just simply continue the series and it'll be fine. But for right now, in the year of 2023, I have completed the Fractured Fable series by Alex E. Harrow. The first book being A Spindle Splintered and the second book being A Mirror Mended. This is a fairy tale retelling. In the first one, we have a main character named Zinnia Gray, who has always been obsessed with the Sleeping Beauty story, mostly because she has been, she has this very rare disease and she's been very sickly her whole life. And she just found a connection with the story of Sleeping Beauty. For her 21st birthday, which she's afraid is gonna be her last because no one who has this disease has lived past 21. Her friend holds this very special 21st birthday party that is Sleeping Beauty themed with a spinning wheel that Zinnia like jokingly goes to prick her finger on. And as she does that, she gets sucked into an alternative world where there is a Sleeping Beauty story currently being played out and she has to save the princess. And it's so much fun. I love the way 
Alexi Harrow flipped the fairy tale on its head. It was very meta. The same with this one, except this is not Sleeping Beauty. It is Snow White, and we are following mostly the evil queen. We got to see the evil queen kind of tell her own side of the story, and I just loved that. I love stuff like that. This was great for me. Highly recommend. They're super short. I would love for there to be more in this series, but for right now, I think this is the end. Then I finished This Poison Heart duology by Kaylin Barron. I read this and the second book, The Wicked, These, This Wicked Fate. I think was the title of it. And I didn't love the second book as much as I did the first book, but this first book always will have a special place in my heart. I already talked about this also in Books That Made the Nice List video, but it is just such a sweet, cozy cottage core fantasy and I loved it. It's just funny to me that Kaylin Barron wrote one of my favorites and also one of my least favorites of the year this year, but I'm still very excited to see what this author does next. I will pick up everything from her. Okay, next we had The Great Cities Duology by N.K. Jemisin. I read The World We Make this year. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It wasn't, I was a tiny bit disappointed, unfortunately, because this wasn't what I was expecting. The first book was absolutely incredible. It was my favorite book, one of my favorite books the year I read it. Um, and this one didn't quite live up to it. And I think that even N.K. Jemisin mentions like how difficult it was to write this book during the time she had to write it. And I, I feel that, I feel for her. Um, overall, I like the way it wrapped up and it was hopeful and interesting. I just, I don't think it's quite what I wanted it to be. But either way, still have a lot of love for this duology. It is about the idea, the first book is about the idea that cities have souls. When they wake up, they choose a human avatar and because New York is the city that she is, she has six souls instead of just one, or six avatars instead of just one, and they have to come together to save New York from this evil cosmic enemy uh, that wants to destroy it. And it's, the first book was so good. It was so good. And this one was really good, but not as good as the first book. The one that I finished just this December is the Take Them to the Stars trilogy by Sylvain Nouvelle. The first book being A History of What Comes Next. I finally read For the First Time Again, which is the third and final book. It was not, like it was a good story. It was just a tiny bit disappointing. Once again, I don't feel like Sylvain Nouvelle quite knows how to wrap up series. Like the first, book is always so good and such an interesting concept and idea and the second book is really good but not as good and then the third book is just like we completely dropped the ball here <laughs> you know but i love to see how this series connected to his first series the themis files and i'm very excited to see if and when hopefully he will write another series in the same world with the ramifications of everything that is happening at the end of both series <laughs> so Hopefully we get to see that at some point one day. The first book is just still my absolute favorite. I, of course, finished the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson by reading Defiant. This is the fourth and final book. I loved this series. It's a lot of fun. I loved following Spencer, who is such an interesting, ridiculous character that just grows so much over the course of the series. And I really loved getting to see that. In the first book, we meet Spencer, who lives on this planet with the other remnants of humanity just trying to survive but are constantly getting attacked by this alien race. This book in particular was really beautiful the way it wrapped everything up and we are going to get a little bit more in this world eventually so I'm excited to see that but yeah I had an amazing time with this. Definitely recommend the series. It seems to be a trend like not all of these are like this but quite a few you, I got to the last book of series and was just disappointed. So the same thing happened with the Drowning Empire trilogy by Andrea Stewart. This is the Bone Shard War. The first book is the Bone Shard Daughter. I adored the Bone Shard Daughter so much. And then the Bone Shard Emperor came out and I loved that even more than the first one, which never happens for me. So that made me so excited to get to the third book and like the author herself was talking about how this is the, bus the best book in the series yet and I was so hyped for it and then I read it and it disappointed me. Like the first half of the book 
was pretty boring, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like we went on this ridiculous goose chase of a quest and the ending of it, like the last third of it was really good, but the way it ultimately ended was really bittersweet. And I was so like sad and upset about certain things. Yeah, this wasn't the conclusion that I wanted. And I think I gave it three stars. The other two books got five stars. Either way, I'm really glad to have wrapped up this series and I'm excited for the author's next series, which sounds even better than this one. So hopefully that one won't let me down as much as this particular book did. Yet again, <laughs> the last book in a trilogy that let me down. Um, this is the Queens of Renthia series. The Queen of Sorrow by Sarah Beth Durst is the last book in this series. The first book being the Queen of Blood. I really enjoyed the first two books. Um, I enjoyed this one as well. I think the overall story of this was really good, but it just felt like it didn't end in the right way. It wasn't a satisfying conclusion for me. It takes place in this beautiful forest. Like just the imagery in here was so picturesque. It takes place in this forest where the people live in not so harmony with the spirits of the, form of the forest. These spirits absolutely hate humans and want nothing more than to destroy all of them <laughs> brutally. There is one person, one queen, that has enough power to keep all of the spirits in check. And in the first book, we're seeing the heir because um, heirs are always kept close because if anything happens to the queen, you need to find the next most powerful woman. Only the women have this power to control the spirits. And so we are following one who didn't expect to be chosen to be queen, but ends up being queen. And it's a big roller coaster from there. I am so good at synopses. <laughs> Basically, this last book didn't feel like an ending for me because we found out like a really big thing about these spirits and why they're here, why they were created and why they hate humans so much. And we also, figured out the solution to ending the spirit problem entirely to like having harmony between everyone and they don't manage to do that kind of more of the same problem and i just didn't understand why we were like told oh the, here's the solution here's the pathway to the solution and then we didn't do the solution and it just felt very unfinished for me and so because of that this last book was a little bit disappointing. I was hoping that maybe at some point this author would return to this world and actually give us a proper conclusion, um, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. So overall though, really loved the series. It was just that little bit at the end that was a little bit disappointing. This is the very first series I completed this year. I did a, my first and only, I think, series binge vlog, which is something I wanted to do more of this year but just didn't get around to it um and that was back in january of this year and that is the great coat series by sebastian de castell this was a roller coaster of a series for me really enjoyed this first book i don't think i gave any of the books five stars or maybe i did i have to look up my ratings because i can't remember <laughs> okay yeah so traitor's blade was four stars. I really enjoyed this first book. In this we are following the King's Magistrates who are these beloved um, magistrates of the king that go around, they travel around the kingdom, they uphold the king's law, they are very respected and well loved, at least they were. Before there was a coup, the king was uh, killed and the great coats just stood by and let it happen. They have their reasons, but because of that, they are now disgraced. Uh, people hate them and call them not so nice names. And they are cobbling together an existence, going around trying to fulfill the last wishes of the king. We are following three such great coats, Falcio, Brasti, and Kest. It's a very like adventure, three musketeer-ish type story. And I really enjoyed this series overall, but I had some serious issues with some things that were included in this series, some of the content in here. The first book I loved, four stars, really enjoyed it. The second book, Night's Shadow, got three stars, really more of like a 2.5, 2.75. There were like some things that I couldn't unsee. And like there was a brutally described in detail sexual assault scene that was like a flashback and there were weird things happening during the flashback. I don't know what the fuck that was, but it was gross. And I don't know why that was necessary to be included in this. It was completely unnecessary. And I'm just like really sick of fantasy written by men that includes 
explicit sexual assault, there's no reason for that. <laughs> There's really no reason for that. Night Shadow wasn't great, but the third book, Saint's Blood, incredible. My favorite of the series. We have that camaraderie, that found family, everything I loved about the first book times 10, and that was a 4.5 star for me. And then the final book got three stars. So it was very up and down. <laughs> so because of that, and also DNFing a previous series by this author, I don't really know whether or not I want to ever read more from Sebastian de Castell, but uh, I did finish the series. It was the first series I finished in 2023, Go Me. Um, I finished a lot of series this year, a lot more than last year at least, and I'm very proud of that. I have one more series to talk about. I was getting ready to wrap things up. Hold on. Okay, I finished the Last Hour series by Cassandra Clare by reading this behemoth of a book, Chain of Thorns, the third and final book in the Last Hour series. After reading this, or when I got around to reading this, I felt like I was just done with the Shadowhunter world in general. I was like, I this has been so many years that I've been obsessed, and you know what? I'm just no longer obsessed. And it's totally fine for that to happen, you know? It's totally fine to not love the things you, you loved in the past. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the book. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed the conclusion. I think that it was a great conclusion. Everything worked out the way it was supposed to, you know? Like, I was not feeling any kind of tension or really much um, investment in the story anymore because I knew that everything was gonna work out okay. Like, that's just how last books in Cassandra Clare's series are. And I thought, you know, I'm just, I'm done with Shadowhunters now. I'm done. And then Cassie Clare announced the titles of the three books in the next Shadowhunter series and I lost it because of the implications. And so now I feel like I am not done with the Shadowhunter world, and I'm definitely gonna read that last series. It follows Kit and Ty. It follows Kit and Ty, and like, they are so beautiful, sweet boys, and I, I need to read their story. And it seems like it's gonna be pretty intense, honestly. I may not have like loved this as much as I wanted to, but I still am excited for more in the Shadowhunter world. I still am. So that, my friends, was all of the series that I completed in 2023. I am so proud of myself. A little pat on the back for getting through all of these series. Let's hope that I get through even more in 2024. We shall see how it goes. That is going to be it for me today. Talk to me down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Let me know how your series are going. How many series are you currently in the middle of? Do you even know? Do you even care? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you want to let me know you were here but don't have anything to say, leave me a Christmassy or wintry themed emoji and I will see you tomorrow for another day of Vlogmas. Bye!